we are busy looking at the electrolysis where water is present and the last thing we did this morning was we looked at the electrolysis of water and there are two reactions taking place the water must be turned into a conductor so they add some acid so it's it's called acidified water acidified water changes the water into a conductor okay. you could use a little bit of sulfuric acid to change the water to um, a conductor you could even add sodium, chlor so sodium sulfate to change the water to a conductor it is not, not necessarily acidified right what happens at the cathode what happens at the anode? Reduction. Reduction happens at the cathode. <coughs> Oxidation happens at the anode. So reduction. Where is the equation that shows that water is reduced? What is the electrode potential for the equation that shows that water is reduced? What's that electrode potential? Negative 0 0.83 volts. There you'll find the standard electrode potential for um, this reaction. So it is, you'll have to help me, 2H2O plus 2 electrons going to H2 2OH negative okay and the water at the anode it, uh, so at the cathode hydrogen is formed and at the anode oxygen is formed what's the oxidation half reaction what is its electrode potential 1.23 there are two 1.23s no so it's a second 1.23 volts. So at standard conditions, this electrode potential would be 1.23. So it takes two waters and it makes it O2, O2 plus, four hydrogen. plus four hydrogen ions plus four electrons. And we showed you how to balance the reactions this morning. This needs to be multiplied by 2. two. So all in all, it goes for 6 water molecules turns into what? A hydrogen and oxygen and four hydroxides and oops, four hydrogen ions and this becomes four waters so there we change that this becomes four waters so four waters cancels four of these waters and the net reaction is 2H2O going to H2 and O2. Any questions here? And then, um, can you go over um, the cancelling, like how you went from uh, the green equation to the blue equation? Okay, this, this together will make four waters, four water molecules. And there on the reactant side, I've got six water molecules. So the these four water molecules cancels four of those, so it becomes two waters. Are you happy?
This is just a repeat of what we said this morning. Then we looked at brine, and it's also a repeat of what we did earlier. No, brine is a mixture. It is a sodium chloride solution. Okay. I want to compare the sodium chloride solution to the copper 2 chloride solution. So this one is Cu Cl2 aqueous and that one is NaCl aqueous. So what do we have in the mixture here as an electrolyte? We have sodium ions, we have chloride ions and we have H2O. What do we have in the mixture here? We have copper 2 plus ions we have chloride ions and we have H2O. Okay. In the sodium chloride electrolysis, we look at what happens uh, at the cathode. The metal ions that are weaker oxidizing agents than water will stay in solution. So during electrolysis, which metal ions will stay in solution? NA. The Na stays in solution. So they will not be reduced. Who will be reduced? Who will be reduced? Yes. So at the cathode, at the cathode, the water will be reduced. So the reduction half reaction would be what? Giving us what? Two. It will take two waters and two electrons in, and it will form hydrogen. So during the electrolysis of brine, not sodium is formed, but hydrogen is formed. Are you with me? Yes. And at the anode, what happens at the anode? Uh -uh. We've, we've, used, we've used water now. Water is reduced. This one stays in solution, so it's not going to change. So what happens at the anode? Chlorine is oxidized. So our oxidation of reaction here is the chloride, two chlorides going to chlorine and two electrons. So what is our overall reaction equation? 2H2O and two chlorides will give us hydrogen and we'll talk about this a little bit later hydroxide and chlorine so this is the overall cell reaction that will take place I mean, I'm with the, um, the cathode reaction, it's supposed to be like a 2H, uh, a 2, uh, two, uh, two OH, isn't it? Oh, thank you. Thank you. And you need the net changes. Yes, you're right. So, what does that change us to 2? So, during the electrolysis of brine, the products that are coming off is hydrogen hydrogen is a product that is coming off and chlorine is a product that is coming off and the hydroxide 
joins up with the sodium so it makes sodium hydroxide. Acid is just added to make the water a, a conductor. <coughs> yeah. So it's not affecting the reaction. But without, without adding a little bit of something that will make the water a conductor, the electrolysis won't take place. Okay. So the cathode Water is reduced there, yes, and at the anode, water is oxidized. But now, what? Okay. What will the electrodes be? What could the electrodes be with water? There's nothing solid here in the water, so what could the electrodes be? Come on, your primary. Your primary choice is platinum. Your primary choice is platinum. Your second choice is graphite. No. Mm -hmm. Graphite. Yes, carbon. So either platinum or graphite. Yeah, I think gold is too expensive. Gold's double the price of. And gold is much softer than platinum. So I don't think they will prefer gold here. Good. Can we talk about this a little bit later? What the cathode is and what the anode is. And there is another danger here. Because when hydrogen and chlorine is mixed, that's, it's an explosive mixture. So we need to look... Um, before the end of the hour and a half, we need to look at these half cells. Uh, we'll do that just now. Just to refresh the rules when water is present. Now, we know that copper is the one that will be reduced. And chlorine, chloride is the one that will be oxidized. We know that from experience because we've been exposed to this. But how do we apply the rules to it? So there, copper is a what? Copper 2 plus. Oxidizing or reducing agent? Are you sure or are you guessing? So look on the table. Plus 0.16. Copper. 2 plus, plus. No, 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 is no, what? No, is it an oxidizing agent or a reducing agent? Oxidizing. It's the oxidizing agent. What happens to it? It's reduced. It's, re it's reduced. Okay. What is the chloride? Also an oxidizing agent. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Are you very sure? Where do you find the information? I heard oxidizing agent. Did I hear wrong? CL negative. CL negative. Find CL negative on that table of reduction potentials. On which side of the table? So this is then a reducing agent. Of course. So when is it the right, it's a reducing agent? Yes. Oh. When it's on the left, it's an oxidizing agent. Now we have an option for water. Water could be an oxidizing agent or a reducing agent, depending, uh, depending on where it is on the table. Now, which ones will react? So we look at our rules. If, so we've got water present. If there are halogen ions present, they will be oxidized before water will be oxidized. So in copper chloride, do we have halogen present? No. Yes. yes, chloride. Chloride is a halogen. So the halogens are the helium and the fluorine. No, the fluorine.
chlorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So that cancels water as an oxidizing agent. Are you with me? Yes, yes. Sorry, sorry. It cancels water as a reducing agent. It cancels that part. Okay? Because chlorine, the halogen, will be oxidized. If the halogens were not there, then water will be oxidized. Okay? And radicals like nitrates and sulfates will not be oxidized. Okay. So, there, it's there. Radicals like nitrates and sulfates will not be oxidized. I'll do another example with the nitrates and the sulfate, or a sulfate. Either one of the two. Okay. So, water is cancelled here, because who is the stronger oxidizing agent here? If you look on the water, on the oxidizing agent side, is water the stronger oxidizing agent or is copper 2 plus the stronger oxidizing agent? Copper. I have one vote for water and one Sorry, vote. Copper, yeah. So copper 2 plus is the stronger oxidizing agent. So, water will not participate in this redox reaction. Okay. So, uh, other, yes. So, when there's a halogen, um, H2O is reduced. H2O will not be a reducing agent if it's there's an halide ion. Yeah. Okay. So, the reduction half reaction is the copper 2 plus. Going to, to taking two electrons and forming copper. And the oxidation half reaction at the anode, oxidation half reaction at the anode will be the chloride going to chlorine. See the difference. Both of them are salt solutions. Both the sodium chloride and the copper chloride. They both salt solutions. In the one, the sodium ion is too weak an uh, oxidizing agent, so it is left unchanged. In the other one, the copper 2 plus is a stronger oxidizing agent, so it is the one that will react during electrolysis. Do you see the difference? Are you alright? Do you see the difference? Okay. So instead of copper chloride, we could also have copper nitrate, copper sulfate solution to electrolyte, as an electrolyte. So let's do that one. Copper? You want copper nitrate. Copper nitrate has this formula and it will be a solution of copper nitrate, AQ. So what do we have here? Do we have a halogen ion present? No. no. Do we have copper 2, uh, copper two plus present? Yes. yes. What is copper 2 plus? Oxidizing agent or a reducing agent? Oxidizing agent. Okay. Then we have nitrate. And our rule says that the nitrate radicals, the radicals, will not change. That's our rule. So we need to identify that. So then, obviously, then, the water must be participating in this reaction. Am I right or wrong here? Okay. So at the anode, water will be the reducing agent. Am I right? Yes. Reducing agent. This will be at the anode. 
and this will be at the cathode. So at the cathode, we have reduction, so the reduction half reaction. By this time I know it off by heart. Cu2 plus plus two electrons goes to Cu. Now I need to take care. What is the reaction that will happen at the anode? It will be the oxidation half reaction. Now which one of those waters will be happening at the anode? It must be the reducing agent. So which water there is the reducing agent? The water that forms the oxygen. Am I right? So the water that forms the oxygen gives you two H2Os goes to O2 and four H pluses and four electrons. And this we need to multiply the reduction half reaction by 2. So the net reaction or the overall reaction would be 2 Cu2 plus plus 2 waters going to 2 Cu's and oxygen and 4 hydrogen ions. Electrolysis is not, there's, there isn't heat involved here unless you melt the salt. So this is a salt solution. The aqueous means it's a solution. And you put a electro, electrodes into the solution and then you connect it to the battery and you would um, then get a chemical reaction. So what can we use as the cathode here? What element can we use as a cathode? But is copper not a solid? So can't I use copper as, as an electrode? <laughs> because this element copper, you can find it as a solid, so you can use copper a copper rod or a copper plate as an electrolyte, so the, as an electrode. For the, water, it you, for the water, you can use platinum. Yes. Now for, let's say, using, uh, so what will your silver? Huh? Let's say we're using silver. I don't think they really use silver. But let's go to silver like a little bit later. Let's go to silver. No. Yes. Isn't the, um, Yes, but also if there is no um, solid reagent. So like with the water, the oxidation half reaction here, you could use graphite or platinum. As your electrode. You need something that can conduct electricity. Graphite is a cheap option. Platinum will not corrode with any acidic substance. Yeah, the nitrate ions will stay in solution. And then you have a copper electrode. electrode and yes, yes. So let's let's draw a sketch graph of the situation here. Um, say this is positive and negative electrode. Which electrode will be connected to the positive terminal of? and which electrode will be to connected to the negative terminal. So this is the negative terminal, this is the positive terminal. Okay. I got one answer yeah. to say it's yeah. copper. Now let's talk about it. Wait, um, is it um, Here we've got our electrolyte. Is yes. It, um, the anode is where oxidation is. Yes. Yes. 
So if you the graphite is where electrons are given off. So electrons are flowing there. Is it making sense? Yes. Because during the during the oxidation half reaction, <coughs> electrons are given off. Will electrons flow here? Will they come here? That to the electro to will electrons flow to the negative terminal of a battery? No. Electrons will flow to the positive terminal of the battery. So which electrode then is where the oxygen will be forming? Where will the oxygen form? The oxygen will form here because that is where that is where the electrons are given off. These electrons are given off there. They can't be given off here. So these electrons are coming from the oxidation of water. So this electrode will be graphite or platinum. This will be your graphite. No, this is not a spontaneous. This is not a voltaic cell. It's an electrolytic cell. Like the, battery battery. the battery supplies the energy. So and the, the energy, the electric energy is converted into a chemical energy. Because there's a chemical change taking place. It's the other way around. Yes, it's the other way around from the uh, voltaic cells or the galvanomic cells. So now the battery supplies the electric, the electricity, and the, okay, the flow of it, okay, the battery, okay, the, the electricity flows goes to the negative um, to, um, thingy, goes to the an anode. The electrons goes to no. This is the anode. This is the anode. No, this is the anode. Oh, you're right. Oh, my. <laughs> okay, you are right. Oof, I made such a mess up now. So, this is reduction. Reduction takes place at the cathode. This is oxidation. Oxidation takes place at the anode. No, I'm right. I am right. This is the anode. Yeah. Because this is where oxygen will form. Because this is where these yeah. electrons will come from. These electrons here are these electrons. So now basically it's the other way around. Because the previous section, we said that see, the negative part is the cathode. And yes. I mean the negative part is that's where the anode <coughs> yes. oxidation takes place. That's why I say please don't memorize anode as the positive or the negative terminal because the actual definition is the anode is the electrode where oxidation takes place the cathode is the electrode where reduction takes place and because of in the galvanic cell you've got um, no battery you've got a chemical reaction there the anode is the zinc for example and the cathode was the copper in the copper zinc cell but the charge on the anode according to the book is negative in the gal galvanomic cell or voltaic cell and the charge on the anode in the electrolytic cell is positive. It's connected to the positive terminal of the battery so that oxidation can take place there. So I didn't make a mistake. It's because you were confused. So um, oxidation is the loss of electrons? Yes. So the electrons are going up through the wire? Yes. Towards to the, the positive battery. terminal of the battery. They're going to flow through the battery and they're going to come here to the negative um, so this is the negative to, uh, electrode and that is the cathode uh, Sangi? So then why we should write for this one is that it, um, the electricity goes from a positive terminal to a negative terminal and uh, we must not memorize the cathode and the anode being the negative or positive 
definitely not. And being and refused. Yes. This was the first year that I expressed it in my classroom, teaching all these years of matrix. It was the first year where I said, in the copper zinc cell, the zinc will be the negative electrode. I don't like doing that because I know it makes problems in the electrolytic cell. Mm. Yes. So, ma'am, um, the polynitrin here, that would be the anode, and um, that is the oxidation half reaction. Yes, that is the takes oxygen place there. Oxygen. Yes. So, this green, this, this green here, the green is joined to the green here. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so um, we said the cathode is where reduction takes place. Yes. So those electrons left from um, the oxygen. That came from the yes. battery. Technically, they're coming from the battery, but they could also be um, from the anode flowing through the battery. Okay? So it's a continuous flow of electrons. What comes in must go out. What comes in must go through. Okay, so here you'll have copper depositing on, and this you can use a copper, a piece of copper metal as your electrode. If you use graphite, the graphite will be coated with copper. And also, take the mass and that contains the copper. The cathode is going to Yes, the cathode's mass will increase, yes. When we look at the purification of metals, a cell where metals are purified, then uh, you'll understand. So the platinum loses No, the platinum will not take part in the reaction. Oh. No, we can't talk like that because there won't be any change in mass here. On the anode, there will be no change in mass here. If the water takes place the reaction. Let's go to another one where we will look at the change in mass of the anode. Is the method we use electrolysis to purify a metal. Okay? So when you when you mine a substance, you mine it as an impure um, substance. You can get impure copper. And if you want to refine it you turn it into pure copper the problem with copper is you won't find only copper in there you'll find zinc silver, platinum gold all those metals will be mixed with the copper so the impure copper is a mixture that could contain zinc, uh, silver, uh, gold, iron, magnesium. You see, this is what you find in the rocks that you mine that you extract from a mine. And what they normally do is they melt it. And copper, um, you can't purify copper, get rid of the other elements by melting it. So they use electro refining. They take a piece of pure copper And they take this impure copper and they connect it to a power supply. Will the power supply be DC or AC? I'll turn AC. 
You must think now. Wait, may I please ask what's the difference between DC and AC? DC is direct current. Meaning the current flows in one direction. direction. Where AC is alternating current, so the m one moment the current flows in this direction, the other moment the current flows in that direction. So w what would you connect this electrolytic cell to? DC or AC? DC. Direct current. Otherwise, you will change the polarity of the electrodes all the time, so these poor things won't know where to get oxidized and where to get go for reduction. So in an electrolytic <coughs> cell, it is important. Another thing to pick up is that the current used is a DC current, not an AC current. Okay. So let's go for our... Which electrode will grow in copper. copper? Which electrode must be pure copper? Um, the one connected to the negative terminal or the one connected to the positive terminal? Which electrode must be the pure copper? Okay, so at the positive electrode, eh, the um, the uh, re uh, oxidation will take place. Ne? The positive electrode must give the electrons off. Okay, yes. so do you want your pure copper to go into solution? Is my question then? Mm -hmm. No. So the negative electrode, that must be your pure copper electrode. You want to get the impurities. You want to separate the copper from the impurities. So this one is the impure copper. And there your copper goes into solution as copper ions. And at the pure copper, you want copper ions to deposit but you got you want copper ions to deposit as copper atoms are you all right with this and the electrolyte here can be copper sulfate why do i want to use copper sulfate because i know for sure the sulfates won't participate in the reaction. They won't change in the reaction. Okay, here, if you have a copper atom there, the copper atom will give its electrons and go into solution. And if one copper atom goes into solution, what's going to happen on the other electrode? A copper atom will come out of solution. So that copper atom takes two electrons here and it goes into uh, out of solution again. The electrons on the negative electrode will that is formed by the pure copper will grab hold of another copper ion. So here, there you will have these things going into solution. So um, there will be holes starting to form on this electrode. This thing will be eaten away. Yes. Okay. And the purpose of the whole circuit is to, is to, to 
to extract to extract the copper from the impure copper and deposit it on the pure copper. So it is called electro repining. You're taking a piece of mineral that's got a lot of different um, metals in it or whatever rock pieces of rock and sand and what will the rock and the sand do? Will it stay behind on that electro? Will it stay behind because remember you're eating away at that electro. Will it go into solution? Will it go into solution or will it will it just fall to the bottom here? It will they call it a sludge. Now Will the silver go into solution here? Yes. Where solution? Wait now. Will so there there will be silver in this impure. There is zinc and silver and gold and iron in this impure um, metal. So silver will silver be going into solution or will the silver be part of the sludge? Silver will be part of the sludge. If you know, if you want to know how, you go to your table of reduction potentials and you find silver is below um, copper. So the silver atoms will form part of the sludge. Yes. A good question because look at zinc compare zinc and copper's reducing agent uh, abilities yes zinc so, so zinc is a stronger reducing agent than copper and silver will will be a weaker reducing agent so silver will won't go into solution it will form part of the sludge but zinc on the other hand zinc is a nasty little person because zinc will also go into solution here as a Zn2 plus iron but the zinc concentration initially is very low so what's the chance that this zinc will go and sit here if the concentration of the zinc is low. If the zinc iron concentration, it's going to increase. No? There is initially nothing, no zinc, mm -hmm. but initially this zinc won't come and deposit here on the cathode, on the pure uh, copper. Because its concentration in the electrolyte is too low. So you have to like pull it out. They have to. Because the concentration of the zinc ions here is going to increase as the process takes place, they have to replace the electrolyte. Replace old electrolyte with fresh that contains no impurities. like I'm just using zinc as an example and they can go through another process to remove the zinc from that oh, so the like in an industrial industrial way. purification of copper so they take they, like in real life they take copper and they, uh, in, an impure copper copper let's say they want to recycle but they use copper which is the impure copper and then this is what they go through yes Yes, because the sludge 
is removed. When they take the old electrolyte out, the zinc ions and the sludge will be washed out of the cell and then they, they can purify the sludge. They can remove the precious metals from the sludge and they'll remove the zinc from the sludge uh, separately. But the, uh, So do you understand this whole process now? Okay, so we've done electro purifica purification. Now it's electro plating. So here I want to take something that is less valuable and I want to cover it in gold or silver. Yes. Okay. I want to plate something. Um, I don't know about in your culture, but in my culture, some people used to take their children's baby shoes and plate them with copper. Mm -hmm. So you'll see in the in in the um, showcases of these people. This is Anne's shoes when she was one year old. This is Peter's shoes when he was one year old. People do funny things to, to be for sentimental reasons. But there are actual industrial reasons for plating metals with something else. So we can plate iron with chrome. And then we prevent that iron from rusting. We can plate iron with zinc. You can plate iron with silver or gold for that matter. So let's use this example. Your textbook uses silver and a spoon. Do you want me to work with that uh, example? Yes. You can plate a spoon that is cheapskate stainless steel the cheapest spoon, you can plate it with silver. And then you'll have to polish, polish, polish to keep it shine, shine, shine. Okay? So let's let's use the example silver plating a spoon. Okay. So we've got our battery and I have the habit of putting my positive terminal on the left hand side and the negative one on the right hand side. It's not to say you must have it like that. Which side will be the side where the silver is going to come from? Pure silver. Yes. What do you want the silver to do? Do you want the silver to go into solution as silver ions? Yes. And you want the silver ions to go out of solution as silver. Am I heading the right way here? Is this going to be the spoon or is this going to be the pure silver? Okay, so this is going to be the spoon because this is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and what will happen there the silver ions will receive its electrons there and form silver so you'll have a nice silver deposit on the spoon and your silver your your plastic your sorry your your stainless steel spoon will turn into a silver coated spoon and where will the pure silver be the pure silver will be the what do we call that the anode so it's connected to the positive terminal. This is the anode. This is where silver will go into solution as silver ions. 
these silver ions will go to the positive to the negative electrode they'll be attracted there and there they'll get electrons electrons will come to the silver ions from the spoon's side electrolytic cell yes Yeah, they do. Okay. Yeah. Um, Electroplated nickel silver. So Cutlery. Oh, okay. You see that where the anode is, mm. oxidation happens. Yes. Which gives off electrons. Yes. And then the electrons um, flow from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. Yes. And then it becomes negatively charged. The speed. Yes. Where, so the spoon will be the cathode. And what do you think is a suitable electrolyte here? Um, no, not electrode. Oh, electrolyte. Oh, silver nitrate. Silver nitrate. Silver nitrate. I silver sulfate. Mm -mm. Yes. 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 Anything with a nitrate is definitely soluble. So, in this example, then are they would then be on a decrease in the mass of the anode? Aha. Here is where, Sangi, you will find that this thing will be eaten away, and after some time you'll have to replace the piece of poor, uh, pure silver because after some time this thing will be eaten away. So it's mass, the mass of the anode decreases. Yes, because the silver spoon um, is getting more atoms on to it. The concentration of the electrolyte um, uh, won't change because for every atom of silver that goes as an ion into the solution, there will be an atom of silver forming. So for every ion that comes into solution, that gives off an electron, there will be at the cathode an atom that takes that electron to form a uh, silver atom deposit on the spoon. So, ma'am, um, when you say place iron with chrome, what do you mean? Then the anode will be chrome and your spoon will be the iron. And then you'll have an iron nitrate solution as an electrolyte. Ma Are you getting the what hang of it? Chrome yes, I need to fix my mistake now. So if you want iron to be plated with chrome, then chrome must be your anode and iron must be your cathode. And your electrolyte must then be chromium, most probably a chromium 3 plus solution. So chromium 3 nitrate. So then the iron is the spoon? The iron is like the spoon, yes. So iron will be your cathode, your chrome would be your anode. So then the anode will disappear? Yes, eventually. There's no sludge? No sludge, sludge because we are not using impure um, anode. The, the sludge is formed when you work with, when you want to purify. You want to extract the copper or just the silver from the impurities. So. <laughs> That's a good question. 
Um, I think they coat it with a decent layer of silver and then they polish it so that it will be a smooth thing. Very good question. What are you saying? Oh, your watch is coated with sil silver or with gold? Okay. Your gold, silver tends to tarnish, so you have to polish it all the time. But you can, if you, gold won't tarnish. But it's easy for gold to scratch off because it's a soft um, metal. That's why they prefer chrome plating. So then the difference between like the gold, gold itself and plating of gold is like the plating of gold is more lighter than the gold. Yeah, it's pure gold. The plated is pure gold, but it's a very thin layer of gold onto something that is less precious. Mm. Yeah, like stainless steel. Yeah. Can I stop this now? Yes. <laughs>